I'm excited to be, you know, to be back and be able to share things that have really kind of been welling up inside me. Um, I love these. I've I finally got to meet some really great people that I've been connected to on Facebook, but we've never met. I've been connected with Sarah, and I've never met her. And of course, Robert. I've listened to him. I've enjoyed it. Actually, because of Robert, is is he is the reason for my poetry. And just in listening, you know, watching him in the beginning and listening to him, it really was because of him that I I got involved in poetry. So. I thank him because of that. I mean, he's so infectious. Um, you know, Mike and Diane are absolutely awesome. I mean, these, you can just, you know, feel the love that truly exudes from them. And, of course, Diane is truly the hostess with the mostest. I mean, she wants to make sure that you are well taken care of, and she does it, and I enjoy that. Um, you know, how do I follow what Robert just said? I mean, there's... <laughs> There's no way. I mean, it's, um, but I do just want to share with you some things that, you know, I have, I, well, I don't even want to say I, but things that have been exploding up and, and welling and have becoming more of a truth to me. Um, you know, Mike always likes us to put names to what he has on uh, the YouTube of what we're going to call this retreat. I mean, he's called it the Mask of um, M mortality, the last mask of mortality, but then he always puts another one, another name to it of each individual teaching, and I was thinking, well, what is this? And I keep thinking it's, it's like a hamster wheel. I was staring, so I don't know about you, but sometimes I just stare off into things. I'm really not thinking anything, and I'm not even looking at what I'm staring at. I'm just kind of looking at it, and I kind of saw this hamster wheel, and it was this, you know, and it wasn't even the hamster. But it was like the hamster wheel, and it was just going around and around. And there was this thing on it, and it was just kept going around and around and around and making all this noise. And it just kept making noise and kept making noise. Every time it went around, it just kept making noise. And I kind of looked back into it more, and what I was really looking at was this phantom man on this wheel that kept going around. And, and as he kept going around, it kept getting louder and louder. And then all of a sudden, the phantom man started to fade away, and the, and, and the hamster wheel kind of stopped. And then it was silent. And then the hamster was gone. And I kind of looked at that, and all of a sudden then, it was just kind of, kind of hit me that that's kind of what this, this is like. It, it's like we're in this hamster wheel. And... I would never sit any, up here and tell anybody, oh, you know, this is the, you know, this is the way you have to believe, this is it. Absolutely not. You know, what I'm going to talk about is really not complicated, but you can't understand it with this mind. So it's not going to be one of those things that you're, that you're going to listen to and you think you can, you can figure it out and find out what it means, because up here you can't. Believe me, I've tried. I've spent years trying to do it. And you cannot understand this with the mind. It's something that you will come from the heart, is what they say, that you will listen to from the heart, but not from the mind. Now, when I talk about the phantom man, I, what I mean by that is it is that image that we've had of ourselves that with our likes and our dislikes, those things that we think who we are, that have been, words have been spoken over us from the time that we're little kids and they form this image of who we are. And that's who we think we are. And that's this phantom man. But that's what he is, he's a phantom. Um, it, it never fails that when I wanna do something, I wanna go up and I wanna speak that Things get revealed. Things happen yeah. right before I'm ready to to get up and speak. It's it's just as Mike says, you know, it hits the fan, and of course it hit the fan the first couple you know couple of months before I was going to come speaking. It started to started to just explode and snowball. I don't know if many of you know what I do, but I am a branch manager for a staffing company. And um, 
I, it's kind of funny because I deal with time sensitive matters and I don't believe in time, but that's what I deal with. I, I'm a staffing company that provides ASAP people to um, model homes. When the sales consultants are sick or they're on vacation, they need people right away, they call me and they say, hey, I need somebody to staff my model home. So I sometimes have an hour to get somebody there. So I'm calling people all the time saying, hey, do you want to go work? And then sending them to work. But then if they don't show up, then I'm trying to find out why they didn't show up. And then I have to send somebody else. So it's constant. It's a rush. I'm constantly doing that, constantly you know, trying to find. They say, I need someone within an hour. Well, I've got to try to find someone within an hour. So it's very time sensitive. So I was dealing with that because the good thing is, is that we're growing. The business is growing. When I started, you know, we were only doing, you know, maybe a thousand hours. We've almost tripled that since I've been there. So, and we don't have that many more staff to add to it. So we're actually doing a lot. So there's a lot to it. Then some of the staff that I had hired, I realized probably wasn't the right staff. So I knew I had to let them go. Well, that's not an easy place to be in when you have to realize, oh, I have to let some go. So for about a month, I had all this going at me and, and knowing what I should do. And I was kind of in a quandary. I was just like, oh my gosh, what's, what's going on? So I sat down. I, I couldn't tell if I was depressed or I couldn't tell if I was exhausted. I just knew there was no joy and there was absolutely no peace. I mean, I was, like I said, I was, I was totally in a quandary. So I sat down and I closed my eyes and all of a sudden I was just like, I'm in hell. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in hell. How did I get here? But when I said that, it's like, I sat down and I'm in hell. It was like, the phantom man overplayed his hand when I said that to myself. And it was at that moment that I realized, you know what? My mind is a, is a sneaky little bugger. He will change his wording and he likes to figure things out. So when, he, when, when I was telling my that stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm in hell. I was like, wait a minute, you know, life started to, expo to explode and when life starts to explode and, and, and things start to be very clear, your mind is still going to speak. He's just going to be a little bit smarter mm -hmm. about what he says. Um, I had learned what hell really was. I mean, I knew it wasn't this literal burning place, but I knew it was this place of, you know, anxiousness where there was no peace and there was no joy and I knew it was a place desiring change. And so I was like, how did I get here? That's what I kept telling myself, how did I get, how did I get here? Um, from a standpoint, I knew that it was because of wrong judgments and wrong thoughts and um, my mind wanted me to go back and figure out what those thoughts were. You know, like, oh, just go back and figure out where you, where you lost it and, and just keep going back and find out, you know, because you're in hell. You need to go find out where you were. But I realized that that was my mind just talking to me, trying to tell me so it could still stay alive and be in control because the underlying lie was still there. And that underlying lie was like Robert had said in his poem, that there was still an I. That was that underlying lie, because I'm sitting here going, I'm in hell and how did I get here? But that was an underlying lie, because there's no, you know, there was no I to be in hell. There was no I to be able to be in hell, and there was no me to figure out how to get to a place of, of peace and joy. The mind wanted me to believe that I was in hell so I could figure out how to get peace and joy. 
it was very subtle. I realized that mind just kept, kept saying, you're in hell. Yep, yep, you're in hell, you're in hell. No, I'm not. There's no me to be in hell. That's, that's the first thing I had to realize. No, I'm not in hell because there is no me to be there. The mind is not going to show up, shut up. As long as we are in this realm, you're going to have to face it. This mind is going to speak to you. You can't stop it. It's going to. It's going to constantly speak. You know, the more enlightened we think we're going to get, all it's going to do is change its wording. That's all it's going to do. And it knows how to do that. Because the underlying desire is always going to be there. That phantom man's ultimate goal is to always remain alive and always to be in control. It knows how to reinvent itself. Britney Spears and Madonna are not the queen of reinventing. It's this. This mind is, knows how to reinvent itself. So even if I changed my belief system, which over the years we all have, we've changed our belief system, we've gone from one belief to another, you know, we've become enlightened, we believe this. The underlying lie is still there, and it's that underlying belief of separation. What I figured out is that as long as I said there was an eye that was in hell, the phantom man was still alive. So even though I knew there was no I, the fact that I knew there was no I was still this sneaky underlying thing to get to believe that I was in hell. Now I know you're kind of looking at me, but when you really, just, I'll say it one more time, the fact that I knew there was no I was still the mind to be able to convince me that I was in hell because I still was believing there was an I, even though I believed there was no I. It was an I that was believing there was no I. That's the hamster wheel. And we're still on it, and, and it just keeps going. It's that sneaky thing of separation. The underlying sneaky of the nine does not want to be totally abandoned over to the thoughts that there's no I. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He can't do it. He, he, you try to let your mind go that there's absolutely no I, it will not do it because that is death to him. And he's not going to let go. You know, and I would love, I'm, I'm going to be totally honest, I would love to be able to sit up here in front of you and say, you know what, I've got this all figured out, you know what, but it's not true. This man, this, my phantom man still reigns, still reigns. I mean, there are times when I have operated where life totally bypasses the mind and it does things, and then there'll be times where... The guy in front of me will pull out in front of me, I'll call him a dickhead, and then the phantom man reigns yep. all over again. Right. So it's not you're ever going to have this all figured out. You're not. Quit trying to. There's no. You're not going to do it. But the thing is just to kind of learn so that you can say, stop, wait a minute, I'm, put the brakes on. And that's what I did when I was sitting there going, I'm in hell. No, wait a minute. No, I'm not. I put the brakes on. Um, there's two things that Mike said that was uh, I loved in his last teaching on journey out of time. And one of the things he had said is you can't get ahead of life. That's so freeing that you cannot get ahead of life because there's no you to get ahead of or behind. You can't get behind life either. You can't get ahead of it, you can't be behind it. You've never missed anything. Mm -hmm. Which I really love that because you know when Nordstrom has its shoe sale and I can't make it, and I say, oh, I've missed it. Yes. I really haven't missed it. <laughs> but we always kind of say, oh, I should have done that. Mm -hmm. I had the missed opportunity. Well, no, you didn't have a missed opportunity because there's no you to miss any opportunity for. And the phantom man constantly uses that to keep us under control and to try to look at, at what we think life is, to try to, oh, I need to do this now. Oh, I need to think to do this. 
but it's just a trap to keep us in that mindset and to keep him alive. Second thing he said is you never make a mistake because there's no you to make a mistake. That's why nothing's out of order because there's no you for to be out of order. There's just this phantom man, but it's not you. And that's the first and thing we have to understand is to get off that hamster wheel is there's no you. There's no you to make a mistake. Okay, you, you can't make a mistake because there's no you to make a mistake. Right. Okay, and there's nothing out of order because there's nothing, there's no you for anything to be out of order for. Right. So again, your mind isn't gonna, your mind is not gonna believe that. Your mind is gonna say, huh, <laughs> what? But that's where you have to let go because that phantom man is not gonna let go. He's gonna hang on all he can. So I'm sitting there realizing, okay, there's no me to be in hell. So those words that Jesus constantly spoke, I hear, but I don't hear them with the natural ears. They have been the words that have been, um, I think, the most instrumental in, in things that I have been learning. And Robert sang his song about it today, actually. And those words are, I am the truth, the way, and the life. I am the truth, the way, and the life. I remember when I first started to say those words out loud. I looked around because I thought lightning was going to come out of the sky <laughs> and strike at any time. I really did like, oh my gosh, how dare I be so blasphemous. You know, I'm sitting here walking around going, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. I did. I kind of looked around like, oh, my gosh, you know, should I be really saying this? I just remember that. And then it was when I realized that, you know what? Those are the most humblest words that can come out of your mouth because they're the most pure. They're the most honest. Those are, the, those are not blasphemous words. Those are truth. To say, I am the truth, the way, and the life. The most honest words that you can say. <laughs> because it's not, it's not you. It's not this phantom man. It has nothing to do with this phantom man. It's the truth of who you really are and what you really are. That bypasses this mind. So it's not blasphemous. The most honest thing you can say. Because when Jesus was saying that, he was not talking about this man called Jesus that walked on the earth. When he said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life, he wasn't talking about Jesus. But yet the phantom man looked at that, and that's why we have this whole religion that's based on that, that's based upon this man, Jesus, and it has nothing to do with this man, Jesus. So when we walk around and I walk around and I say, I'm the truth, the way, and the life, it has nothing to do with this person that you see. But how many of you have walked around, how many of you have looked in the mirror and have said that? and just said, that's what I am. I'm the truth, the way, and the life. Because you know what? Until you can see that that is really what you are, the truth, the way, and the life, you're never going to see the person in front of you that way. You can say all you want, yes, we're one, and yes, we're that. But if you can't look and say to yourself, I am the truth, the way, and the life, you're never going to do that for anybody else. I'm not going to be able to look and say, you are the truth, the way, and the life, unless I believe that I am too, because we are one. There's only one. So if I can't say that, if you can't have those words come out of your mouth, then you can't believe that it's anybody else. This realm is the realm of the individual. In this realm, we exalt individuality. We really do. We try to explain it as oneness. I mean, I've heard, oh, you know, we're one spirit, but we're all individual expressions. You know what? That's just the natural mind trying to understand oneness because there is no such thing as individual in oneness because that's what an individual is. An individual is separate. If you look up the word, it means separate. It means set apart. In oneness, there is no separate. It's one. 
always one. There's no separateness to it. So you can't be an individual expression. You can't put individuality into, uh, into anything that has to do with oneness. You know, we all always say, Mike says that I have it on my Facebook, you can't be one with something if there's only one. Mm. With. With means two. Mm. Can't be one with something. Because with negates what you're just trying to say. Okay? Because one plus one will never equal one. There you go, Robert. There's a song. One plus one will never equal one. <laughs> <laughs> because this realm is the realm of the individual, we have this concept of passing time. Now, Mike loves to quote Albert Einstein. I love Albert Einstein, but he's not the only one that's studied time. I mean, physicists have been studying time for all we know. And there's this one physicist, I love to read him. His name is Julian Barbour, and he's, um, he's a physicist who studies time. And he quoted, I quote him, if you try to get your hands on time, it's always slipping through your fingers. People are sure that time is there. They just can't get a hold of it. He goes, my feeling is they can't get a hold of it because it isn't there at all. <laughs> there's no such thing as passing time, the easiest thing to do. There's no such thing as passing time because there's no me for it to pass for. Why do you need time if there's no you? So there's no such thing as passing time because there's no me. You know, everything in this realm stems around a me. You know, from the time that I've been a baby, I've been taught how to relate to everything that's around me. Okay? How to relate, how, not what to do, how to do this, how to, you know, relate to people. So it's all this realm and it's all about about me until you start to get into that knowledge that wait a minute there's only life that's all there is out in this appearance realm this is not life this truly is not life what I I, I can't see life I can't see what I really am you really can't. You can't see life. You can't see where you're going. It's in this realm that the mind cannot understand because the mind can only understand what it can feel, what it can taste, what it can touch, what it can see. Um, what is out here in this realm? All that we see here. It's just a projection of life. But it's a projection through a lens of separation. Life, what I truly am behind, be, beyond all comprehension, okay, that life that I am is being projected out in this realm, but it's through this lens of the phantom man. In this realm, there's a you, there's a me, there's opposites, there's abundance, there's lack, um, you know, there's good, there's bad, there's sickness, there's health. Because this is where the land of separation is, because, or the land of judgment, because separation is the reason for judgment. And everybody's projection is different. You know, we talk about how my world is different than your world. It's because my projection is different. My phantom man has different images and, and, and different thoughts and ideas than yours. So what is projected out in my world is different than what's projected from yours. Do you ever have two people that can look at the very same thing and see two different things? Do it all the time. People look at the same thing. Somebody will look at that and say, okay, that's brown. Somebody might also look at that and say, oh, you know what, that's like maroon or something. Because the projection is different, and everyone is different. So this realm is the realm 
that is being projected through that lens of separation. You know, even time is separated in this realm. We have past, we have present, we have future. It's all separated. That's what this realm is, is separation. So since the land is the land of separation, it'll always be that. You can never try to make this realm one. Don't try. Nobody's ever, you're, you're not, you're not going to be one with someone in this realm. It's the realm of separation. Don't, don't try to make this realm one. You can't. It's just not going to happen. Um, there's always going to be a you. There's always going to be a me. But what happens is the mind tries to mix these two realms together. And the phantom man has no trouble with us trying to do that. That's why we have how many, what, millions of religions out there trying to mix the two realms together to try to bring some sort of sense. Well, you know, rather than just looking at one realm, let's just bring the two together. But you can't. There's no way. You cannot mix these two realms together. You can't be human and you can't be divine at the same time. There's only the easiest thing to do instead of trying to mix these two realms together is quit looking and listening to the projection screen. That's all you got to do. Quit looking at the projection screen. This is the, proje pro um, the projection screen. Quit looking at it. In this realm, life is going to be projected through that lens of separation. Quit looking and listening to it and quit believing that you can be both human and divine at the same time. First of all, there's no you to be human and divine at the same time. It's false belief. There's no you to be human. There's no you to be divine. There's only life. That's complete and that's what you are. You know, this life, this one life, it has physical vessels, but it, this physical vessel is not you. You have to let those thoughts of any kind of identity disappear. Because otherwise, we're going to think we're a creature of duality. Mm -hmm. We're going to think we are a creature of two realms. And that's what keeps the hamster wheel of duality. Keep going and going and going and going. That's why it keeps getting louder and louder and it keeps speaking and speaking and speaking. And that's why all these circumstances keep getting the way they are and they keep getting louder at you and you keep looking at them and looking at them because that hamster wheel just keeps going around and around and around because, you know, we believe this is life. But yet we also believe that no, but then there's something else about us that is life too. And we try to mix these two together and it just doesn't work. It's, it's not going to work. I found out that I had to quit looking at the appearances as life was happening around me. The phantom man wants us to think that life happens. Life can't happen. The word happen means to occur or come about. That's what happen means. Life doesn't come about. Life is always. It's all the time. It has no beginning. It has no end. And that's what we really are. You know, what I'm, what I'm sharing with you is I want it to bypass your mind. I don't want you to be able to understand this, and this here because you're not going to. I want this. This is life speaking to life. It's the same life right here. And this life is speaking to that life. I'm not expecting to look at you going, oh, yeah, I understand. It's because you won't. Because guess what? I don't either. But it's life speaking to life. What in the appearance realm, in this appearance realm, things happen. And it's in this realm where passing time is. Things happen within a realm of time. Because if it's happening, if it's going to happen, it takes time for it, things to happen. And that's why we have passing time. This phantom man, because it believes that life happens. And this is why the appearance realm really isn't what life is. Since our mind is the god of this world, 
And why the God of this world? Because it pronounces judgment of good and evil based on the five senses. And that's what a God does. It pronounces judgment of what is good and evil, and it carries out this judgment. The mind does that every day, and that's why the mind wants to tell us that this is life. So it can pass its judgments every day of what is right and what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. This needs to be changed. This needs to conform to this. Because the God of this world reigns on his throne. The phantom man gets to reign in life, in what he thinks is life. Not in what life really is, but he gets to reign in life. And this is what the mind does every day. It's the way it gets to stay in control and keep the delusion of passing time. If the delusion of passing time is kept, the concept of separation rules and reigns, and this person we think we are is praised for its individuality. You know, we get to praise it for its individuality. And where does the individual live? He lives in this realm. There is a lie that I need to live my life. My kids used to say this all the time. Oh, just leave me alone. Just let me live my life. Right. All the time. I mean, I used to say it to my, you know, to my mom. I said, you know, I just need to live my life. Or, you know what? I only have one life. i got to make the best of it. It's in this realm of appearances that life has been whittled down to a length of days called a lifetime. It takes place from, from birth until the time of death. This mindset gives life a purpose. If life has a purpose, it needs to go somewhere and do something. <laughs> it needs to become something. A purpose even by its own definition, needs to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Life doesn't need a purpose. Life is all in all. It can't be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. How can you fulfill something that's already complete? Mm -hmm. You can't fulfill anything that's already complete. Life does not have a purpose. It is everything. You are that life. That's what you really are. How many of us can just look and say, I don't have a purpose? Life doesn't have a purpose. But see, we can't because we're still clouded with this phantom man that that's really who we are. So what do you mean I don't have a purpose? I have a purpose. I'm created to be here for some reason. Life has no purpose. So what I'm trying to get you to do is Get out of thinking that that's your phantom man. You're not. Life doesn't have a purpose. It doesn't need a purpose. You have no place to go. You're everywhere. <laughs> See, the mind can't comprehend that. I'm everywhere. No, I'm sitting here in Jackson, Michigan, sitting right here. No, you're everywhere. Your body might be in Jackson, Michigan. But what you really are is everywhere. That's why I love that movie, Lucy. I loved that movie, Lucy, when I watched that movie. Somebody said, you need to watch this movie, Lucy. I'm like, I actually, I think it was Mike told me, you need to watch Lucy. So I watched Lucy. So in the end, she does, she kind of transcends, and, and it's like, where's Lucy? And she enters through the phone, I'm everywhere. But see, this cannot comprehend that. No, I'm not everywhere, I'm right here. No, you're everywhere. But see, the mind sees this body and everything through the lens of separation. This earthen vessel is here, but the life of what you really are is just moving through it. That, that life is moving through, your, through this vessel, but it's everywhere. It can't be contained. I used to believe in the concept that life dwelt within a me. You know, when I first started out, especially, you know, when you get saved, 
okay. Um, because I was gr grown up in a, in a home where my grandma, you know, she used to set me in front of Oral Roberts when I was little and say, you need to watch Oral Roberts because you're possessed. <laughs> okay, eight years old, and my grandma used to say, you need to sit in front of Oral Roberts because you're possessed. Because, you know, I, I it was a little wild thing. I like to go out, have a good time and everything. And, you know, you need to watch Oral Roberts, you're possessed. So I grew up in that, just going, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. So, but... You know, the older I got and things started happening in life and that, you know, I thought, okay, maybe there's something to it. I better get saved. So, of course, you know, you go through that, you get saved. So I started out getting saved. Well, of course, you're born away from God. And so you're the spirit that needs to be brought back to God. So you're, you need to have a whole new spirit put in you so that the Holy Spirit can come and live you. So that's, you know, I started to believe that. Okay, I'm a spirit. But yet, I had to get saved, and now I've got God's spirit in me. So, you know, I kind of grew up, had that mentality. Again, there's a me spirit, and there's a God spirit. Okay, duality. Yeah. Then, you know, I started learning a little bit more, and then there was the concept of, okay, there's only God's spirit. And that's all there is. There's only the one spirit, God's spirit and it dwells inside these earthen vessels. So I believed that for a while. Kind of, you know, kind of got that. And then the more I started going into it and, and just st started things just starting to open up, it was something that my natural mind could not understand, and I still don't understand it, but I, I, I see it, and especially when I get into an airplane because uh, I don't like to fly. I'm not a... I'm not a big flyer, but that's going to change. I'm going to fly. Um, that I realized that, you know what? It's not that life is dwelling inside of these bo it's inside my body. Because I would get on a plane at first, and I would say, this plane's going to be safe because life is you know, dwelling inside this body in this plane. So Don't look at me. I know you've all done it before, too, probably. <laughs> so... But it's like, okay. But now it's like, no, you know what? This body and this plane, it's all in life. It's not that life is dwelling. Life is moving through this body, but it's not dwelling in this body because our natural mind can't understand that. You know, my mind can understand life living in the body because you know what I can see that I can see you moving and you know breathing and doing that and say oh life is in the body and then when it doesn't anymore and it leaves we can see that too because it just lays there so that's what we think oh you know I did I'm thinking okay I can see that yeah life lives in that body and then it just kind of leaves the body but then I I, I just got to the where it's like no you know what it's everything is in this life. <laughs> it's not that this life is in this body. This body is in life because life is so vast and so uncontainable. You can't contain something that is all in all. It can't have any kind of boundaries to it. See, we can't understand that because this mind is a boundary. It has a boundary. So that's all we can see is things that are boundary and separated. Okay? Boundaries are separation. Containers are separation. Okay? You know, life living in this body would be life separated. It's, it's, it's separated from you because life lives in me and life lives in you, and it's separated. And so these bodies are, 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 are a container of separation. So... It's like life can't be separated. It can't be contained within this body. It's, it's far too, too big and too vast. But my mind can't understand that. My mind can understand that life is living in this body. And so when I thought that, it's like, okay, well, if my mind can understand it, obviously it can't be the truth. So it was... Life isn't working, it isn't living in this body. It's what this body is, it's just a projection through that lens of separation. 
the body's just needed for this realm. Yeah. When, you know, no longer in this realm, you're not going to have this body. It's not going to follow you into the next, into the next realm. It's, it's only used in this realm of projection, and it's projected. What life, this life is being projected through this realm of separation, and that's where these bodies are in that realm of separation. So life can't be d dwelling in there. It's, it's all in the life. Even Jesus said that. I used to, of course, take the religious way when he said, a body, that has, a body thou hast prepared for me. And when that was said and they were talking about it was God, well, yeah, a body thou hast prepared for me. He was talking about God, but the phantom man. That phantom man prepared a body for you through this lens of separation. Was the God of this world provided the body for you? That lens of separation is, is, is how that came about. It wasn't life. And I know, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> But this body actually fuels this thought of separation because you're there, I'm here, we're separated. It constantly fuels the separation. Um, that's why life cannot dwell within, it's just a projection. Dean posted one time, if you need to become, it will never be you. If you need to become, it will never be you. You never become something you already are. The word become in itself is a word of time. To become something takes time. Since there's no you to become anything, there's no time in which it takes to become. I'll say that again. To become something takes time. Since there's no you to become anything, there's no time in which it takes to become. The appearance realm always needs to be changed. That's because the mind sits on its throne of judgment determining what's good and evil. So, since the appearance realm can change, because all of us will agree, Within an instant, what we see can change. Can't be life, because life can't change. Life can't change. Life is complete. It's all in all. You can't change it. It's everything all the time. It is complete. Okay? It's also truth. Remember Jesus, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. They're all the same. Life is truth. Truth is life. That's the way it is. But truth is life. Life is truth. It can't change. Truth can't change because it's the truth. It's always the same. It's always what it is. Life is always what it is. It always is. So it cannot change. But the appearance realm can change. And since it can change, this can't be life. It's only the projection through the lens of separation. The phantom man will never know completeness and it can't understand it. It's only going to know separateness. This mind is only going to know separateness. That is why it is needed. That is why time is needed in this realm by the eye to try to make itself complete any way it can. The ego needs separateness to survive. It needs a something else needs a higher power or a God to try to make things be the way they want it to be, or it needs a someone else to blame. <laughs> yeah. It's got to have separate. It's got to have I mean, look, look at Adam blamed Eve, Eve blamed the snake, you know, and so on. So, yes, there always has to be something else, separateness in this realm in order. We have to have something that's a higher power or something to blame. You know, our minds... And Rex and I were talking about this. Our mind tells us that if we have the right house, the right spouse, lots of money, lots of time, great health, if we get all those things, we might be complete. 
So the phantom man goes around creating change in order to make those things come about. I mean, that's, even if we don't want to admit it, that's what we do. It's so subtle. I mean, we have to admit, every day, every day we do it. In our jobs, in our talking with people, everything. I mean, we, you know, we think we're trying to get something to make ourselves complete. Like Robert was saying, if I sit up here, you know, and if I, if I don't say the right thing, I'm wondering what you're, you know, thinking and thinking about me. We all do it. I sit up here and think the same thing, and I wonder what they're thinking about. I mean, we ha be honest, we all do. I mean, it's, those are just the thoughts that we have. Or, you know what, I, I want to get a new house. I mean, we think about it all the time. If I have this, if I have that, then that's what's going to make me complete. And that's what the phantom man banks on. And he tries to sneak it in there any way he can. We just have to realize that. We just have to be honest and say, you know what, he gets sneakier and sneakier. And even when I'm talking about this, you know what? There's still the phantom man in there, still. That's why it's, there's no time does not exist in life because there's nothing that needs to be done. There's no completeness. And that's why the mind will never understand that there is nothing to do. The phantom man, this mind, this phantom man, this image of who you think you are, it needs the myth of passing time because passing time creates the illusion that you have to do something. I mean, I was in hell, all those things, because I, I had to do something. I have to, you know, I have to make sure I get all these people to the right assignments, and I have to get this done, and I have to fire this employee, and I have to get this done, and I have to get that done. All because of that myth of passing time, so that guess who was really having to do it? Who did it really exalt? It exalted this phantom man. I got to do this. I got to do that. It kept that phantom man alive. But you really don't think it does because it's something, oh, I got to do it. But it's the hamster wheel. Just keep going around and around and around and around. How many times have we said, you know what? I just want to do this before I leave this earth. You know, and, hey, I even created a bucket list at one time. I want to do this and I want to do that. Why? Because I wanted to feel like there was something I can accomplish. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, okay, there's anything wrong with bucket lists, but it's like, well, I, want, you know, I wanted to do it because there was something I wanted to do. It just kept that, that man alive because passing time says you have to do something. There's no place to get to because everything is always now and complete and there's no journey. A journey is to get you from one place to another. The phantom wants to tell us that life is a journey and you evolve on this journey. But that's the belief in passing time. It's a belief that we have to get somewhere. But again, it's an underlying thing that there's a you that has to get somewhere. So we don't want to give this up. I know, we don't want to give it up. I'm the first one to admit, I kicking and screaming with this. But when I have, it's something that I can't even begin to describe. <laughs> because the mind does not want to die. Time ends when this separate you ends. The mind is never going to let me see the truth that I am. I cannot see life and the mind cannot understand this truth. And that's why life is not what you see around you. And that's one of the things, it's just, this isn't life. But every time we're just bombarded with it, every commercial, every, you know, live life to its fullest. Let's, you know, just do this and you'll have the thing. It's, but life cannot change. I love what Christina Todd put on her Facebook the other day, and I have to read it because I really liked it. And she said, He who needs no thing and doesn't need to give up anything either. Or who, who we are needs no thing and doesn't need to give up anything either. It is the mind full of taught concepts that is on a trip 
of pain or pleasure. These illusions, when seen and discarded, release us to enjoy the freedom we already are. As Punja said, these taught beliefs are the idea of a personal identity, or the phantom man. When we see the reality of no separation, we will see all as ourself. The idea of heaven or hell when we die, what a fairy tale. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you. But who are you? Jesus was saying, you're life. So the kingdom of heaven is within life. Because everything is in life. See, we take that and think, oh, the kingdom of heaven is within this body. But he wouldn't have said you're a body. The kingdom of heaven is within your body because he wasn't thinking in those terms. He was thinking that life is truth. And it's the way and it's who you really are. So the kingdom of heaven is within life. It's within this life. And that's who you really are. Not this mind, not this body. The idea that there is an entity or God out there to help us, praying to a God is an attempt to control others. In truth, there is no God or separate beings to control or be controlled. This is all suffering. The idea that we need to give up anything, and I add or try to gain anything, for the mind is simply illusionary and based on a past or a future. Who we are is already complete and perfect. If we detach ourselves from all thought of separation and fears and anxieties pertaining to a past or future, we will know the joy of our true being. Throw away all the rubbish in the mind and jump. All is one life and we are that. That was what Christina put on her Facebook and I love that. Life is who we are, the one life. So, back to me being in hell over the few weeks. It was duality operating in the fact, and it wanted me to figure out how to stop. The first thing to realize is that, guess what? In this realm, it's not going to stop. Your mind is always going to speak to you. Always. This realm is its kingdom. It rules and it reigns, and it's not going to shut up. But there is such a thing as silence. Silence takes away the control. The phantom man always wants to have a say about everything, and he uses those words to control. You cannot use your mind to stop your mind. You can't retrain your mind, and you can't get your mind to think that you're life. Believe me, I've tried. Okay. I have a very capable mind. Okay, my mind thinks all the time, and it's very capable, and just trying to, think, okay, well, if I just, you know, I just keep saying, you know what, I'm life, and keep thinking that I'm life, and keep looking at situations and thinking I'm life, it's, you know, it's all going to kick in. Well, you're trying to train your mind, and you can't train your mind, because your mind's not going to do it. Your mind's not going to roll over and play dead. It's not going to do it. It's just, it's not. So it's, it's something you totally have to bypass. You know, usually in those times when I would try to just constantly, you know, tell my mind, you know, crap would hit the fan and those house of cards would fold. And, you know, then, then of course, there's, you start to feel, oh, my gosh, all alone. You want to go back to, oh, maybe I st just, maybe I need to start praying. <laughs> you know, you want to go back to that old thing that you thought because, okay, well, I thought I, thought I had this, you know, on my mind. It's like, nope. Nope, the mind's not, not doing it. Have you ever just, you know that you know something, but you don't know it mentally, and you never tried to figure it out mentally, and you just did something, and you didn't know why you did it, but it all worked out? It just totally bypassed your mind. That's life, working, working through. You didn't have anything to do with it. You didn't even think, you didn't even know why. I've experienced those times, and those are the best times. But when my mind gets in there and tries to figure out, like, okay, I really need to figure this out, it's not going to work. 
So my mind was constantly telling me, hey, you need to do this, and you need to do that, you know, just, you need to do, that. you really shouldn't fire her. Oh yes, you should fire her. No, you gotta make sure you get these people over here. You gotta do this. And it was, it, it was just speaking to me all the time. And it's like, okay, you know, I could tell it to shut up, but it still kind of, kind of wants to speak. And then I tried to think, okay, well, I need to think these thoughts. Well, thinking those thoughts wasn't gonna. So finally, I just let it. Just it just started. But I just sat there, in silence. I didn't say anything. And I didn't entertain the thoughts. I didn't kind of answer them back in my mind. Because a lot of times that's what we do. The thoughts come, we answer them back with an answer in our mind. Yep. Ticker tape. Process. Yeah. I mean, I can't be the only one that does this, right? But, I, you know, something will happen, and I'll just answer it in my mind thinking that that's how it's going to work. I didn't do that. I didn't answer. I didn't answer with this, and I didn't answer with this. It still was yapping, but I didn't answer it. It was silence. Not silence like the mind wasn't being silent, but I was being silent. I didn't answer it. I just sat there. Oh, my gosh, you talk about a crucifixion. I literally thought, I mean, this thing, I thought my insides because there was like, I got to do something. I got to, you know, like, oh my gosh, my mind was screaming. Yes, you need to do this. If you don't do this, this is going to happen. And I just kind of like, no, I'm not, I'm not taking that. I'm not taking any of that. I'm not answering. I'm not answering that call. And the mind just kept talking. And it, like I said, it was literally a crucifixion. It literally felt like I was dying because I wasn't entertaining that. I wasn't taking that. I wasn't answering it. I wasn't bantering back and forth. And I, I, it must have been probably a good three days. And I just, nothing. I mean, even my husband would talk to me. He's just like, try to talk to me. And I'm just like, I really, I can't talk. I don't want to talk. People can't understand when you say that. Well, what's wrong? Just talk to me. I no, can't. Can't talk to anybody. Don't want to talk to anybody because I'm not even talking to myself. Yeah. I just have to totally shut it down. He still kept yapping, but it was like the silence started to get louder. Silence can get louder. The mind's not going to stop talking. Okay, so th you gotta quit thinking, oh, I'm gonna shut it up, it's not gonna shut up. It's the silence got louder than this. And it kept getting louder and louder, the silence. And how many know life broadcasts love and peace in silence? And finally, in that silence, because I knew what I had to do. Yeah. And it wasn't like, okay, you need to do, do this, this, this. You know, when I started get learning things in the spirit, that's what I wanted. I just wanted like, okay, I heard everybody say, yes, I knew what to do. I did this because we got, you know, God told me this or I was taught to do this. It's like, okay, I got to hear. I have to hear the words. I'm, I'm very like dogmatic and literal say, okay, you need to do this, this, this. So that's how I've always been thinking like, oh, I need to be led, but I need to be led you need to go to the corner. You need to turn right. You need to do... So that's how I'm thinking. But that isn't how it is. It's, I didn't hear anything up here. I didn't hear it with these. I just knew, but I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But my body did it. Because it was life that was working through me. I wasn't telling my body, okay, now you got to go to the corner and you got to turn right. There's a big, vast difference. It was life just doing it. And I couldn't figure out why, how I did it, why I did it, but I did it. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be the thing. But my mind kept screaming during that time, my mind, you have a problem. You need to solve it. You need to fix it. This is going to happen to you if you don't do this. And it was the mind that was creating all these problems mm -hmm. so that it could speak and live and so that it could work. But when I just, I'm not answering you. Yes! No. It kind of reminded me, I love Big Bang Theory, especially when Sheldon knocks on the door. Benny, Benny, Benny. It's kind of like that was my mind was doing that to me. Dana, answer the door. Dana, answer the door. Dana, answer the door. It's like, not doing it. Not doing it. Not doing it. But it was that silence. The more the silence kept 
getting more and more. And the silence actually got louder than this. What you truly are are birthless and deathless, and that is why mortality is a mask. The phantom man's greatest fear is death, and that's why we have so many religions that try to meet that freedom from death. What is death? It's whatever the mind believes it to be. There's different kinds of death. There's a, you know, emotional death. I mean, you like a certain person, and you think, oh, and you give your heart, and then they, you get rejected. And that's an emotional death. Rejection is an emotional death because you feel rejected. Yep. So death isn't just what we think of leaving the body. There's all kinds of death. But in life, there isn't. And what you really are, there isn't. And the phantom tries to crucify this truth in order to live this death realm of, of experience and exercise his control. Only when the realization that life is truly what we are and not something to be lost or gained or attained do we actually get off that hamster wheel. Um, I wrote a poem. Actually, I wrote a couple. And one of them I'll read tomorrow is, um, I kind of changed it for Mike. But this one I had wrote. There is no such thing as passing time, no future to lay a hold of and make it mine. Remembrances of a past held hostage by the blind, the passing of time is a concept of the mind. The phantom constantly lives by the hands of the clock, controlled by the sound of each tick-tock. A future to look forward to or a past to exalt. A second chance at redemption to erase past faults. In the land of passing time, there can be no rest, only struggling and toiling to always be the best. Time commands the individual who worships separation. It's mind solving problems in complete desperation. The phantom plants the thoughts of anxiousness and worry. Time advances the appearances and fear rushes in with a fury. A belief in separation, that there's a me, this is happening to. False judgment rules and reigns, declaring it is true. Time disappears when the phantom is gone. Away goes the thoughts that made death seem so strong. Peace only comes when each second quits its chase. Spontaneous life exploding putting an end to the rat race. Life knows not a concept of a season or an age, no events captured in pictures or history written on a page. Life has no beginning and it will never have an end. No appearances to control or a future to apprehend. No. Only when we see that this life is truly what we are, and we can actually say that, and speak that, and look in a mirror, and say, I am the truth, the life, and the way, and know that it's not this, but that's really what I am then I'm going to be able to, to look at everyone else and say the same thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.